Clifford. Clifford. Hi, Ashley. My little girl. I know she had, she was spayed. Poor little thing. Oh, wow, 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 wow. What a day. We're gonna wait a minute. I'll let you guys look at some cute puppies instead of my Ugamug. Oh, there's Maisie and Meyer and Buckeye. Buckeye, did you tell them why you have to have a cone on? I know, sweetie. I know. So, um, the name of our group is Tracy's Paws, and we are in Hondo, Texas. And we had a surgery day here yesterday. And we had 22 dogs that we spayed and neutered that will not be contributing to the overpopulation problem. And this is Buckeye. And the reason Buckeye is wearing a cone is he was Crip Orchid. So for anybody that doesn't know what that means, he had a retained testicle that our surgeon had to go fishing for. And it took her a while to find it, but she found it. And um, so he's got a little bit bigger of an incision than normal and he has to wear a cone. And we're keeping him away from his brother, Crew. I know, Buckeye, you're lonely. But we let him, um, during the day, we let him visit. But if they're roughhousing at all, we take put the cone on. And he sleeps in here at night because we want to make sure that there's no roughhousing. And then we have Maisie and Meyer. They were also spay and neutered. Look at Meyer. Doesn't even know he was neutered. Little Maisie's a little sore. So she's had her pain meds for the day. And then we have all these guys here. Where are they at? We have Phoebe, Chandler, and Rachel. And the girls are always sore than the boys, guys. <clears throat> but everybody so far, incisions look good. Um, yeah, we're just very fortunate that we have a spay neuter center here and we have a, a, a whole crew of veterinarians that we work with that come out and help us with all kinds of things. Um, yeah, and then let me show you too what we had. Um, we have two more little peanuts in here that were spayed, but they don't even act like they were. Look at, they're jumping around like jumping beans. Look at you guys. So they're done. I would shut that toilet lid. <laughs> what if one of them crawl, like climbs and falls in? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, and we had, you know, we did some testing uh, during our spay day. Look at the list. This is what comes in from the border. Chagas, heartworm, tick illness. Um, you know, we literally see everything that comes in from down there. And like I always say, if you want to know what the community needs, ask the animals. So if the animals are coming in with heartworm, chagas, fleas, ticks, uh, not neutered, not spayed, I think the community needs some education, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we all know that that area down there by the border of Mexico that we get all of our dogs from, which is um, like Harlingen, Westlaco, uh, Mission, you know, Cameron County, Hidalgo, some in Hidalgo County. It's, they need education down there, guys. And I know many of you saw the post with the uh, hoarding case, I had to do an open records request to get those uh, pictures and video. I, I was just in disbelief that the woman wasn't charged. Now, what I've seen in the past week, which it, I don't know why, but um, it seems like it's been one after the other. There was a case in Brownsville 
a case in mission. Um, and then I, I want to say like the county in Hidalgo County, but all of those police chiefs down there uh, with those cases filed animal cruelty charges because we do have them in the state. The biggest um, challenge has been getting uh, the police departments to enforce it, but I see Brownsville doing it, Mission and Hidal Hidalgo. Why is uh, Chief Joel Rivera from Westlaco not backing his animal control officers? That bothers me because you guys know the struggle that we went through with the Westlaco shelter for years, right? They finally have some of the best people there and good people make all the difference in the world. And they're out there doing their job. They found that this, this home, which I do believe is being condemned, according to the neighbors, um, the, the animal control officers wanted, I mean, it was bad, <laughs> right? So they pulled, I think, 15, 15 animals out of there and documented everything. I mean, here it is on a silver platter, everything you need for animal cruelty charges and their police chief basically slapped him in the face and said, you know what, I'm not gonna back you on this. So I, I don't get it. All I know is that we're gonna have to continue um, exposing people like that, bringing it to light. As much as I hate bringing this stuff up, and trust me when I tell you I do, my life was so much easier and better when I was naive to this stuff because now it keeps me up at night and I'm, I'm determined to make, uh, force some change, some positive change. And that happens by holding people accountable. You can't, you cannot um, see animals living in that type of filth and just say, mm, it's acceptable. It's not, it's not normal, it's not acceptable. And it's also not normal to let kids walk to school seeing emaciated animals that aren't taken care of. So, um, again, um, I'm just gonna continue bringing it to light. I've tried not to put it on this main page because um, it's not pleasant material, but if you wanna see exactly how often I think about it, go over to my personal page. It's literally every five minutes I'm blasting these guys. So. But on a, on a more positive note, um, the Milton. I do not know how this building, um, it's here guys. Uh, the ribbon cutting is June 1st. And we're gonna have the ribbon cutting whether the building is 100% completed or not. Um, my guess is there's gonna be a lot of loose ends, but we have a special guest for this ribbon cutting, which is the actual real Milton, the dog. So it's June 1st, and I would love to have all of you there, but for those of you that can't go, um, my plan is to have a live stream. I'm working on getting um, you know, some better internet out there, and I thought, hey, I'm gonna look into this Starlink, but their customer service, guys, I hate to say it, it's terrible. <laughs> so I have to install that stuff myself, which I just don't know if I'm capable of it. Um, but if we don't go with Starlink, we're gonna probably have to use the same provider we have here. So if we have a good enough internet connection out there that I can live stream it, I would love to do that because I want everybody there with me. And even if it's, you know, live stream. So yeah, the Milton. Dreams really do come true. <laughs> so. For anybody on here that might be going through something that you feel like your whole life is, is about to crash or you're losing everything, you're not. Rhonda and I thought the same thing and we just kept going. Sometimes um, you ask for things and you don't get them, right? And you're like, why didn't I get that? And you don't find out till later. Well, I now know why. I, the, all of that happened to me and Rhonda. Um, it's so I can be where I'm at today and doing what I'm doing now. And after you've been for four years, just the Milton, the Milton, the Milton, now that we're here, now what, right? Um, trust me, we're just getting started. There is so much that we wanna do 
for animals and people to make the world a better place for people and their pets. And um, I just, we've been delayed. So now that this Milton hopefully will be behind us soon, watch what we do. <laughs> so there is just a, a, a lot, like a long list of things that we want to do for our community, for people and for pets. You all know that I'm very big on education. That's one of them. Um, but I really do believe that I have a good part of the solution to fixing this overpopulation problem and crisis, quite honestly, that we have right now in the animal space. I, I've never seen anything like it. And it's everywhere. It's in all of these communities. Um, if, you, if you're like active in your shelter at all, and you have a lot of dogs on next door, people are saying, hey, I've never seen so many stray dogs. Find out if your, your shelter does something called community sheltering. That's just a fancy word for the shelter is going to be getting the budget that we always have, but we're not going to take in animals anymore. We're going to make the community shelter them, except for the community doesn't have the resources to shelter them or the dog savvy. Um, they're, not able, they're not animal catchers, but if you're seeing stray dogs everywhere and you want to know what's going on, please private message me and I'll let you know. Okay, so I, I know there's some people that would like to see some dogs. We have some long-term stays that got adopted uh, for our next trip, which is going to Columbus, Ohio. And we've never been to Columbus, Ohio before. So this is a first. We have two long-term stays that even if nobody else was adopted on this trip, I would drive that van happily for them. Um, Sometimes dogs have to stay in rescue a little bit longer than we would like them to. And as you know, we look for really special people to adopt our dogs. So if we don't find the right home, they don't go anywhere. So Wendy got adopted. Wendy's a long-term stay. She's a dog that um, came in with some puppies a while ago. I, I, I should have looked up her intake uh, date before I got on here, but I'm gonna say seven months maybe we've had her. She's from Love Us Mutts. And she's just a beautiful dog. She's got a little white on her muzzle. So I think people, when they saw her on her pictures, thought she was older than she is. And she's not. So hopefully my, my phone will hold up when I go in the room here. Sometimes it drops. So hopefully, let's just hope it doesn't. Okay. Look at our Wendy girl. Hi, Wendy. That's my hold on. See, I knew that Wendy. See, I told you it's start it's starting to drop. But Wendy's right by the door. Hopefully I can kind of stand here. Hold on. Wendy, I think your mama wants to see you. I can't go in the uh the room. Look at her. She's uh she's out for the night. She's been playing all day. Now we also um Savannah and Camilla over there uh, were spayed, so they're very sore right now. Um, I wanted, I, I'm going to mention something too. Um, and this might be a little bit of a controversial topic, but it's the reality of rescue. So if you're Wendy's mom, no, I'm sorry I couldn't stay in there longer. The, the phone drops. I'm going to show you Nicholas too. Nicholas's mom wants to see him. But it's the same thing. When I go in there, the, the, the reception drops. So here's a controversial topic I'm going to bring up. And I might regret it after I do. But it is what it is in rescue. So you guys know that um, <clears throat> the cruelty case that came in from that house, there were 15 dogs in there. And the neighbor told me... Um, that the woman only went there like once a week or once every two weeks. And there were some puppies there that I thought I was going to be able to help because I was getting dogs from down there, but they died. And I was told that the woman didn't even know there were puppies in there. So I have one of the dogs from the cruelty case here. Her name is Chica. And when we spay neutered yesterday, the surgeon put her on the table 
She was in the early stages of pregnancy. She had 11 puppies. Now, in rescue guys, when, if they're visibly pregnant, that's a different story. But many times we have no idea. And if we were to stop every time, every spay that happened when a dog was in an earlier part of pregnancy, we'd have a thousand puppies here. The areas that we get these dogs from, nobody's spayed or neutered. And unfortunately the dogs don't get the memo, no hanky panky. And little Chica was pregnant and we had another one in there that was in the early stages of pregnancy. It is absolutely sickening to me that that dog, and I'm gonna show her to you right here, would have given birth to 11 puppies in that nasty, disgusting house. They would have suffered and died like the other puppies that uh, came out of there. But Chica, this is the sweetest little girl. I know, sweetie. So she, she, um, she was spayed and it was a little, it was hard on her. But she's doing much better today. She um, has a good appetite today. We give her pain meds. She's had her pain meds and she's doing good. So again, guys, I hate to bring up a, a controversial topic like that, but in all the years I've been doing this, probably the first eight or nine, I had a vet that would tell me, um, every puppy that you allow to be born with what we have going on, you're killing a dog in the shelter. You're taking a home away. And I would cry. I mean, I, I struggle, struggle, str even now I struggle with it because I, I don't know guys, it's, it's a very, very hard thing when you've got all of these dogs that the, the overpopulation problem right now is terrible. And you've got dogs coming in here and no, again, nobody spayed or neutered, right? So, and a good portion of them are pregnant when they come in. We have no idea because no, they, you know, when they come in, a lot of them, um, you don't even see a sign, a, a hint of it. So most of the dogs from down there have everything wrong. Um, tick illness, uh, somebody didn't take care of them and give them heartworm prevention. Nobody's got a spay or a neuter scar and they're usually filthy, not microchipped. It's, we need education down there. So that was Chica and then we had, again, a couple more um, in the other room that came in from down there with, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to also show you another little guy named Diego. This poor little dog, you see the scar on his side? He had a, a large abscess on his side that uh, must have been very, very painful. And so our vet took that off and he's wearing a cone too. So that's Diego. <clears throat> And then I'm going to see if we can show you Nicholas and hopefully my, I'm hoping my, um, my phone doesn't drop. Hold on. But look at this guy. So Philbert, Philbert. Okay. Hold on, Philbert. Let me tell you about Philbert. I'm going to stand here though. So I don't, if it doesn't drop, can you believe that this dog this dog was turned in because he had fleas. That is what was on the car, the kennel card. And that's a purebred dog, so they probably paid, I don't know what for him, but he's also heartworm positive. So when we tested him, heartworm positive, we've sent off his Chagas test, so hopefully he's not positive for both. But they bought the dog and then never gave him heartworm prevention or flea prevention. I guess they didn't know that he needed it. And he's a little, you know, he's not older, but he's probably two or three. Our vet did an oblation on him because cosmetically she said if she were to have neutered him the way he was, it wasn't going to be good. So he had a little bit of a tummy tuck, but on the back end. <laughs> so hold on. Okay. I have a feeling my phone is going to drop. 
So Nicholas's mom, hold on, we're gonna do this really quick. This room has got bad service. Where are you at, Nicholas? Oh, he's outside. Hold on, that's why. Hold on. Nicholas must be outside. Is he outside? Where's my boy? Nicholas! Hold on a minute. My, I, I'm not seeing where Brenda has him right now. She did a little bit of moving around. Where's Nicholas? Oh, there he is. I didn't see him. There he is right there. There's our boy. My eyes are bad. I didn't see him. He's such a good boy. I know, Philbert. I know. And we've got Shelby in here too. But I'm not gonna be able to sit in there because the, the coverage is not good. But we also had a special request to see Lottie. Now, I don't know if that means that there's somebody watching that wants to see her, but I mentioned it to Brenda and Brenda said no. I <laughs> said, she might have an interest in a doctor, so hold on. This is our Lottie girl. <laughs> And she is definitely a favorite here. Look at her tongue. <laughs> Look at that. She's got the squishiest face I ever saw. Hi, Lottie, what'd you get there? Oh, he's got a little mole there. A little mole. He's a good girl. Oh my gosh, Lottie Lou. Look at you. <clears throat> Look at you. Look at that mouth. She's one of the best girls. She's like a Walmart greeter. So you could take Lottie anywhere. She loves kids. She loves adults. She's built like a hippopotamus or a barrel. I like to call her my barrel. And she's just very loving. She's from a cruelty case down in La Vila, Texas. And... Wait, no, not in La Vila. I'm sorry. I, I want to say it was probably Mission or Weslaco. She um, was found in an abandoned house with a bunch of other dogs. Um, it was very, very hot out. They were chained, crated, no food, no water. And she must have been a breeder dog because you can't see it from here. But Lottie has some chandeliers. But no more babies for Lottie, right? She's a big old blockhead. Her's a good old girl. I give her kisses right there too, don't I? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. She's very laid back too, so she's just a good, sweet dog. She wants to go home with somebody. My, my daughter Cassidy took her to Austin for the weekend and sported her around with a bandana on and... She loved it, and Cass said she was a real good house guest. She's a good girl. You're a good girl. So that's our Lottie Lou. Oh, look, she doesn't want me to stop. You don't want me to stop? No, she don't want me to stop petting her. She's our girl. Look at that. You're a good girl. I love you, too. And then this is her buddy, Mia, right here. Mia, um, for, for whatever reason, Mia's not been picked yet. And Mia's, um, Mia's from a cruelty case. But she's got a heart of gold and it's just a doll. I know, I see you, Kylo. I see you, little girl. Me, oh, my little Mia, Mia. I love Mia. Okay, you go hear me, okay? Mia's been with me um, probably a year now. And I think we've had maybe one or two applications on her, but they were not what I wanted. Our adoption team was not happy with them. Um, and the way we look at things is the right home is going to come around and she can stay here as long as she needs to until we find the right home. We don't want to just put our dogs in any home. We want them in the right home. So sometimes that takes a while. Right, Mia Mia? This is my black and white row. I've got the beautiful Kylo. Hi, sweetie. 
the beautiful Mia. And then Lottie over here, Lazy Lottie. Lazy Lottie. Yes, Anne Marie said she Anne Marie um said she remembers when Mia came in. She was bald. She didn't have any fur and she was really skinny. And that's one of the most amazing amazing things about a dog is if that would have been you or I, we'd be probably still boohooing about it. <laughs> Dogs put it behind them, they don't look back, they forget about it, they go on to live their best life, and they don't wanna talk about it anymore. <laughs> so, I, I've, I've tried so hard to learn that from them. You know, we all do stuff like that where something happens to us, we, can't, we just can't let it go. I did that for a couple of years, even, even now I catch myself with, you know, what happened back, um, uh, October 2019, catch myself just still going, what the heck was that? <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't matter. It happened. Uh, it's everything in, in life is a lesson, right? You learn something from it and you move forward. And dogs have that ability to do that on everything. So pretty amazing creatures, if you ask me. I wish more people uh, understood just how special they are, you know. Now, one thing with our program that I wish we did differently, and that will change when the Milton is up because we're gonna have an adoption area with a special little fenced in area with a gazebo. But the way our program works now are people fall in love with them online, their pictures, their video, but they don't actually get to touch them until we deliver. So when our new building is done, People can come out and spend time with a dog that they think that they may want to choose for a new family member. And sometimes, you know, these dogs need to sell themselves. So like a dog like Lottie, you know, in her picture, she looks like a big bruiser, but she's really just a big marshmallow, a big lover girl. Um, so that'll be kind of nice. So I will let you guys know uh, which internet provider I go with. But I do plan on live stream, uh, streaming the um, event. Milton will be there. I did put an RSVP uh, QR code up there. So if you plan on attending, please RSVP to the event. We're going to have barbecue, um, all kinds of things. So, And I'm probably going to have to be wearing a, a pair of sunglasses the whole time. I'm a crier. And um, this has just been a an unbelievable four year journey that never in a million years would I even think that I'd be here right now. So on that note, guys, I will see you next week. Uh, and uh, don't forget to spay and neuter your dogs, your cats, your weird friends, your relatives, your husbands if you have one, boyfriends. I'll see you soon, bye. I'll carry your love.